All right, let's talk about the relationship between uh, the price of a bond and interest rates and the coupon rates and its face value. Okay, so the main idea here is that the price of a bond on the secondary market, right, so after it's, uh, it, it was initially issued, uh, so on the secondary market, is, it's going to be equal to the present value of the cash flow from the bond, right? That should, that should probably make some sense, right? I mean, what, how's the market going to value it? Well, it depends on how, it's going to mar uh, how the market is going to value um, it's, it's cash flow, right? All the, all the coupon payments and, and, the, and the face value that will get paid at the very end, right? So, okay, uh, a little bit more explicitly, if the owner of the bond is receiving periodic coupon payments, say C1, C2, CN, however many there are, right? And the market interest rate is K, well, then the price of the bond should be uh, the first uh, coupon uh the coupon payment discounted, right, by one, right? Uh, coupon payment in one year, discount by one year, one year's worth of interest. Um, plus, you just keep going, right, all the coupon payments all, until the very end, the last coupon payment discounted uh, end times, right, because it's coming uh, in end periods. Plus, the face value will, will get paid back uh, in end periods as well, so you discount that end times also. All right, so a quick little side note, a couple of side notes. Uh, in practice, uh, it's often the case that you're observing the prices, right? So you're not calculating the prices, you're observing them. And also you know the coupon payments, right? So you know all the Cs, right? C1 all the way to Cn, right? However many there are. And you also know the face value, right? So all these, ver all these parameters are known. And so the thing that you're actually figuring out is what the market interest rate is, right? So you can you can figure out what K is by knowing all the other parameters, right? And that's something you can do, right? Is, is figure out, okay, well, it, it's, it's one way to figure out, okay, how is the market discounting the future, right? Because you're figuring out the market interest rate because that's how much they're discounting all these payments if the price of the bond is whatever you're observing, right? Also, the... You know, this interest rate K doesn't necessarily have to be the market interest rate, right? Um, you could use your own subjective, like, discount rate, right? You can use your own subjective interest rate based on your time preference instead of whatever the market interest rate is uh, to calculate your own subjective value of, of the bond, right? So anybody can do that, right? This, this K can be any interest rate that you want it to to figure out what the value of the bond is, right? Okay, so just a couple of quick little side notes uh, on the, the, these uh, relationships. Let's go ahead and look at an example to illustrate calculating the price of a bond based on these parameters, right? So let's suppose that the face value is $1,000. And again, the face value, that's how much the bond is going to pay back at the very end. Usually that's the exact same as, as what somebody paid for the bond when it was initially issued, right? Usually, almost always. Um, and then let's say the coupon payments are the same, right? So C1 equals C2, just keep it simple, uh, $50, right? And let's say that the market interest rate is 6%, right? So we got K equals 0 0.06. So what that means is that, okay, the price of the bond is going to equal all these payments, right? The, the two coupon payments discounted, right? One you're getting in one year and another you're getting in two years. So you, so you discount that one twice. And then the face value is going to be uh, discounted twice as well. You add up all these uh, present values of all these cash flows and you find that, okay, the price of the bond should be $972.67 based on that. Now let's think about that for a second. Notice that the, the, the price of the bond is less than its face value, right? The price of the bond is $972.67 and the uh, face value is 1000 and that's going to be true whenever the coupon rate is less than the market interest rate. So the coupon rate is basically, you know, the coupon payments divided by the face value or the coupon payments divided by, you know, what was, what was initially paid for the bond, which is usually the same as the face value. So the coupon rate is 5%, right, 0 0.05, and that's less than the market interest rate, 0 0.06. And so that's why the, the price of the bond is less than its face value. And 
when you think about this for a moment, I mean, it kind of makes intuitive sense, right? I mean, the bond is paying back a, an interest rate that's less than the market rate. So that should make the bond worth a little bit less, don't you think? Uh, another way to think about it and, and kind of make intuitive sense of this is that, well, if the, if the market interest rate is greater than the, you know, the coupon rate that the bond is paying, well, then you're going to be discounting using a, a larger interest rate, right? So you're discounting using a 0. You know, 1.06, or sorry, 0. 0.06, um, and that's greater than the 0. 0.05. So since you're discounting by a larger interest rate, that's going to make these present value cash calculations smaller, and so the price of the bond would, would be less as well, right? So hopefully that makes some intuitive sense that when you see uh, you know, the market or interest rate is greater than the coupon rate, well, then the price of the bond is going to be less than its face value. So let's see what happens when the uh, coupon rates, the coupon rate and the uh, market interest rates are the same. So, okay, this time we'll, we'll keep the coupon payments at $50 and we'll adjust the interest rate, market interest rate down to 5%. So notice they're, they're the exact same interest rate, right? So you have a coupon rate of 5%, market interest rate 5%. And so doing these present value calculations, you get you get them here, and you can see that they add up to $1,000. So that $1,000, the price of the bond is the same as its face value. And this is true in general, right? Anytime, um, you know, face value is, is the same as the coupon, sorry, the, the coupon rate is the same as the market interest rate. That means the, the uh, the bond's price is going to be the same as its face value, right? You can actually prove that mathematically. It's not just for these numbers, right? These values of, on the parameters. Um, it's it's true in general whenever, um, you know, the market interest rate K is equal to the coupon rate C over the face value, right? Whenever that's true, it doesn't matter how many, how many uh, you know, periods that the term is, uh, it doesn't matter what that is, it's always going to be this, right? You can actually prove that mathematically. Okay, so now let's, let's think about this. Can you guess which is going to be larger between the bond price and the face value when the coupon rate is greater than the market interest rate, right? We already saw that when, there, when the coupon rate and the market interest rate is the same, then the uh, price of the bond is going to be equal to its face value. And we also saw that when the market interest rate is greater than the coupon rate, then the, then the price of the bond is less than its face value. So what about this last case? Well, let's see. Let's do an example. We'll lower the interest rate down to 4%, keep everything else the same. So this time, notice, doing our present value calculations for all these coupon payments and the face value, we find that the price of the bond should be $1,018.86. So this time, the price of the bond is greater than the face value. So... This is going to be true whenever the coupon rate is greater than the market interest rate. And again, you can think of that intuitively. I mean, if, you, if, if the bond is paying more than what the market sort of uh, is thinking it needs, then that is going to make the bond more valuable, right? Um, and another way to think about it, again, is that, it, well, if you're discounting by a lower rate, right, that means that these present value calculations are going to be greater. And so it's not surprising that the price of the bond is, is, is greater, right? Okay, now let's just summarize these things real quick before uh, we end the video. So uh, the market price of a bond, you know, that's equal to the present value of its cash flow, right? So that's that's basically the main point, right? I mean, once if you remember that, you can derive everything else in this video. And one of the things we saw, one of those uh, conclusions that we found from this is that there's an inverse relationship between the price of a bond and the market interest rate. So, in other words, when the market interest rate rises, that means the bond prices are going to fall and vice versa, right? If the market interest rates fall, then bond prices should rise. All right. Thank you very much for watching.